are listening to an Atomic Broadcasting production. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. And remember, do your part, such as like, comment, rate, and don't forget to tell a friend to tune in for an Atomic Time. Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Harrell, but you can call me Harrell. I am friend of the show, uh, and I'm here with Sam to discuss Starfinder 2nd Edition. Hi Sam. Hello, how are you doing? I am doing great. How are you? Uh, Pretty excited. Great. Well, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Starfinder 2nd Edition? Yeah, um, so Starfinder 2nd Edition, is the name might sound familiar to you, Starfinder, we usually play Pathfinder on Written in the Lost, so it's made by the same people, Paizo. And Starfinder is their science fantasy branch of the system. Um, There was a first edition. We actually got started as a group playing. Well, we got started after college playing uh, Starfinder first edition, which was a lot of fun. Um, But we didn't really mesh with the mechanics a lot, so we kind of stopped playing it. And Pathfinder second edition came out, so we started playing that because the systems are much more what we were looking for and the Starfinder 2nd edition is their new version that's going to be completely compatible with Pathfinder 2nd edition so the rules are pretty much the same just with new things for the setting since it's in space there's a lot of new rules related to that and a lot of new classes and ancestries that we're going to be testing out excellent so this is a play test yeah, so Paizo is really big on getting feedback from their player base. So you'll often see if they have new classes, they'll put out play tests so people can test out the new classes. In this case, this is going to be a whole system as a play test. They did that for Pathfinder 2nd Edition as well. It was a very different game before <laughs> it became what it was. And this is going to be a lot of the same. Now, the base is already there, so... They've given us, and it's free on their website at paizo.com, there is a, oh boy, 250-page rule book that's for free as a PDF that anyone can just go out and download. It's got all the new rules. You still need to have some of the Pathfinder rules already, or you go to like Archives of Nethys, and you can just play. And so what we did is we've taken this system, this this science fantasy setting, and we created a fifth-level adventure to run. So we are going to test out the game at fifth level, essentially. Excellent. Excellent. That seems like a lot, a whole new system to test. How are we approaching that test? So we decided to kind of go the route of, we are going to have two GMs and two groups of players. We're going to have, it's going to be a six episode show. So it'll be three episodes, each group. I'll be running one of the groups. Jordy will be running the other group. The idea came because Starfinder has space combat and ground and general regular ground combat, and we, we thought to get a full experience, we should test both of them. So we wanted two different groups. They didn't include starship combat in the playtest right away. They're wanting to test out the cores of the game before moving on to that, because starship combat was a point of contention in first edition it was a very different game than the rest of the game and you either hated it or you liked it i don't know many people who loved it i'm sure that they're i'm sure you're out there i'm sure you're out there but they probably want to do a lot of work to it this time around so they're not giving it to us yes but we're still keeping that concept and we're going to be alternating between two groups so there are six classes in the play test so we split it up with three players and three players, plus me and Jordy. So when I'm running it, Jordy's going to be a player in my group. And when Jordy's running it, I'm also going to be a player in his group. So that we're also both experiencing both sides. That's great. That gives you insight as both a GM and a player. So you kind of know what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're even, because of the amount of players we have, like I said, there's six classes, but there's eight players. We'll also get some overlap to see how different people approach the same class. So, for example, the space group that I run, um, the players in that one are going to be Nolan, Olivia, Jordy, and Michael Petit. And we're going to have a soldier, a Solarian, a witch warper, and an operative in that group. Now, the six classes, I know I just said four of them, so I should probably explain what the six are. (laughs) Soldier is a 
based they changed up the soldier so in first edition starfinder soldier was very much like a fighter in space they were good at every like weapon and that was kind of their deal that makes sense this edition they are now constitution based so they use heavy armor heavy weapons and area fire that's a new mechanic they're playing with is being able to take an automatic gun target multiple enemies and make them make like saves as opposed to trying to attack them Jordy's taking it upon himself to try out how much support they gave to melee that's his direction for a soldier we have a solarian solarians are sort of a lot of people call them space jedi essentially starfinder jedi they are all about the balance between the photon the graviton di dichotomy. dichotomy thank you of uh, stars so they like gain all their energy from stars they can create energy weapons they can fire energy blasts they run really fast they're kind of monks in their own way very cool olivia will be playing that class and going fully graviton which for those who are interested in first edition we as a group all decided graviton sucked um <laughs> so she was especially excited not just because she didn't like it in first edition but because all the stuff that it offered her really made her excited about the class so i'm i personally so excited to see how the graviton comes out because it looks really fun in this edition the operative nolan will be playing that those in first edition they became both the skill monkey so they're good at all the skills and they're also good at all the damage they were kind of just good at everything so in second edition they have tuned them a little better um, they're not quite a skill monkey now they're more damage focused they're very single target damage focus with abilities like aim or letting them do extra damage to a specific target they're very stealthy no one will be playing a sniper going around using stealth to his greatest advantage i am comparing a lot to first edition this is a play test for the new edition this is what we're here to do right in part is also to compare to contrast other classes witch warper now this very interesting to us if you remember steven steven was in our first edition campaign. yes i was jenkins came had to re leave and rejoin the campaign he came back with a witch warper correct i remember uh historically he did not like the class in first edition uh he tried his best but it never did what he wanted it to do so he has taken it upon himself to play as witch warper he's not in this group but petite and jenkins both the michaels will be playing witch warpers to see how they play out this time they're taking different directions about it they are a casting class and they are all about mostly reality warping and there's different approaches to that whether it be knowledge from the multiverse or ability to impose your own reality upon real life they're a very cool flavor and yeah. we're really excited to see how they've been tuned for second edition awesome uh what are the remaining two classes well there is the mystic steven which i believe i'm familiar yes you're, you're playing a mystic in i am this one uh do you want to talk a little bit about the mystic sure so the mystic is also a spell casting class like the witch warper but their powers are based around forming connections to like powerful base elements of the universe i played a mystic in our starfinder first edition campaign and I was always frustrated that as a casting class that I was really limited in what spells I could choose and what spells I could cast. I'm really looking forward to see how the second edition Mystic plays out based on what I've looked at so far. Uh, it looks like it's going to remedy a lot of my complaints about the Mystic. Uh, the Mystic is also, and it was this way in first edition, is a very good healer class. So that's probably going to be my role uh, for the most part in, in our group. Yeah. They can be occult or divine casters, I believe. I believe those are the options for them. So uh, I think they can be primal as well. Oh, they can be primal as well? Mm. Okay, I didn't remember. Uh, my character is going to be an occult caster. So One thing I like about it with those traditions is their feats basically allow them to fill the role, depending on the feats you pick, of a druid or of a bard. Right, yes, correct. Well, they kind of get cleric stuff right away, but you could take those domains as well. Yes. So what you're familiar with is Pathfinder. You can almost be those different classes with the Mystic and always still have that healing extra. 
Right. Yes. You know? Correct. And they have a. I mean, they have a, a feature that is very functionally different, but reminds me a lot of the cleric's divine font that gives them extra healing on top of the spells that they can cast. Mm-hmm. So, and we'll see that in play in the yes. first episode, actually. No, second episode, because you are on the ground team, yes, not I on am. the space team. Correct. So then there's the last class, which is the Envoy. I'm actually playing an Envoy, which is <laughs> interesting, because first edition, I had no interest in the Envoy whatsoever. They were just sort of a kind of bard, but not... I didn't really get their identity very well, aside from just attempting to be the face of the party. The second edition, they have remedied that. They are indeed still the face, but they are more of the leader. They have a lot of abilities that buff all your allies. They can make your allies move out of turn. You can get bonuses to damage for your whole team or debuffs on enemies. And a lot of their abilities now have the added effect where if the envoy gives the group an order and then he acts on it first, it procs a lead from the front ability, which makes all the buffs stronger because you as the envoy have spent your time to give the initiative to the group, essentially. Really cool. I was trying to figure out something that had a class that would give me a middle ground of just being a standard kind of soldier kind of character. Because for me personally, soldiers being all heavy armor focused means I'm not interested in playing them. But operatives are all light armor and very light weaponry. So then I was left with, well, where's the middle ground? Envoy kind of fills that vibe, plus giving you the leader tactical abilities. So that's what I will be playing in the ground group. Now, so the ground group will be me and Harold. Jordy will be running it. And then all our additional player will be Michael Jenkins and Jack, who you might know from season one of Records of the Unknown. And I'll be playing an Envoy. Harold will be playing the Mystic. Michael Jenkins will be playing a Witch Warper. And Jack, he'll be playing what the soldier's offering, which is heavy armor and lots of explosives and lots of area damage. I'm really excited to see how that group really plays out. They're both very different groups, and they seem like they're going to be set for very different things. Now, on top of classes, they also are offering a lot of new ancestry. Of course, yes. I'm really excited personally about all these ancestries, because they just offer such different things, and I'm very curious to see how they'll come out. There's a lot going on with those, and you'll see our ancestries as we come into play. Sure, absolutely. So uh, going back to this being a playtest, is there any way for uh, our listeners or our audience to participate or uh, give feedback of their own? Yeah, so so what we're doing since we're doing the playtest, the PDF I said uh, was free on their website. Also alongside the PDF, there is a survey. So after you've played the game a little bit, there is a survey you can fill out. Now the survey closes at the end of 2024 so december 31st 2024 i think is when it closes so you have all that time to play this game do like a couple one shots with some friends and then you can give as much feedback as you want there is a lot of feedback you can give it's a whole system's worth of feedback now also in the in the pdf i mentioned they actually do tell you like with the classes what their focus is on the play test so you can play it what they're asking you to help maybe focus a little more on but then you can also take it upon yourself like jordy with the soldier to test out how it's working so far with what they're they kind of just gave the option for but didn't put a lot of focus into like the soldiers melee build what we're doing here since we're doing the three episodes of each team so it'll be six episodes with this at the end of that six episodes we actually will be getting together and then releasing an episode where we just are going to give all of our feedback we're going to try and get all eight of us together i can't guarantee that we'll, all eight of us will be there i hope <laughs> that we will we're going to give you all, we're going to just talk through essentially what our survey responses are going to be. Just here's what we noticed, here's what we liked, here's what we'd like to see improve. That opens a conversation up. I'm going to try and hold my survey responses until like the end of the year, closer to it. Because if you're, if you are interested in giving your feedback and you listen to our episodes, you know, because we want to be an example there, you can listen to what we did and maybe we didn't do something right or you think, well, they did this rule, but what does this rule really mean give us some feedback if we did a rule wrong maybe or play off of what we did while you're testing yourself and i'd love to have a conversation with some people who are interested about this whether that be on our social media or on our discord Um, because 
I don't, I'd, I'd love to get some more feedback from people or conversation from people going before I put my survey in because oftentimes you feel something in the moment and then that's going to be your response. But if someone might tell you like, hey, you did this thing, but it's this thing for this reason, maybe that could help maybe give you that sense of, yeah, okay, I could see why they do that ruling as opposed to something different. So seriously, if you have the opportunity, this is one of my favorite settings. The setting is amazing. It's so much fun. We're going to be exploring the whole setting here in the game. Um, I don't want to go into the setting too much here. It is Paizo setting, so I don't feel like I need to really explain it very well. There's probably some information in the PDF. I can't remember how much is in there about the setting. There's plenty online from first edition, so if you're interested, look into it. It's kind of a sequel series to Pathfinder, but not. There's a lot of interesting mysteries going on in the world. But what you'll see in the playtest specifically, I'll explain so that pe so that people aren't too confused. So the main solar system where Galarian, the Pathfinder planet, would be, is called nowadays it's called the Pack World system. And there's the general planets uh, that you would expect in uh, in our reality in re in real life. Our solar system is nine <laughs> planets. I say that questioningly. I don't remember. <laughs> Pluto's Honestly, a planet. Pluto's always a planet in my book. And then uh, another thing we'll be doing, we won't be playing in the Pack World system. I know, I set the whole thing up. We're not even going to be playing in there. We're going to be playing in the Vescarium. What is the Vescarium? It's a military warmongering s solar system with a blue sun. Isn't that fun? <laughs> uh, the Vesk are a warlike lizard race. Um, they have subjugated every planet in their solar system, giving them the wonderful names like Vesk 1, and Vesk 2, and Vesk 3 based on their designation of how far away they are from their home world of Vesk Prime. One of these planets, Vesk 6, since they've taken it over the the, the native races like the Patra that are uh, feline-like persons, they have been raging a guerrilla war against them, trying to earn their freedom. Now recently in Starfinder 2nd Edition lore, the Vesk have ceded the planet. They've given the planet back to the people who call this planet Polanis. Now what we're going to be playing is there is a Vesk general who decided not to seed the planet. He is not giving up on the planet, and he is going to try to remain like a brutal tyrant of the planet and not give it up. The groups will consist of members from that Freedom Force, members from the Vescarium, and members from the Pact Worlds in an alliance to take out this general and give the planet its true freedom as a united affront. And that's what we'll be playing. So I wanted to give that context so you guys didn't go into this and be like, what is going on? Where are we? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, check out the system lore. Seriously, I love this stuff. It's really good. And I'm really excited to see how the playtest comes out and get to talk about it afterwards. I feel like a lot of us here at Atomic Broadcasting really love getting into mechanics and talking about how rules work. And we don't do that a lot on our shows. We try to do it to explain stuff. But this, I'm hoping for the survey, we can get really into it and really discuss it. And I hope you all listening will really glean a lot from that. If you're interested in the playtest, this is a great place to do that. If you're not interested in the playtest, let me put that out there. If you're not interested in the playtest, this is still going to be a really fun adventure that you can listen to. There might just be a little more mechanical talk than normal, but we are still making this a fun time and a fun group of episodes to listen to. So don't think that you're just going to need to skip these if you're not interested at all. Just maybe don't listen to the afterword unless you just want to hear us chilling and talking. Well, sounds very exciting. I cannot wait to get these episodes out. Is there any final words you'd like to our audience to hear before we get into this this is our first time that we've ever done two gms um, i wrote the whole story for more or less and jordy filled in a lot of pieces on his end so i'm actually personally really excited to see how that comes out games like this i love writing and telling stories in whilst i love these crunchy mechanics of pathfinder and starfinder i don't really like running them so i had fun running the starfinder system personally this is also like a test to see how it would work for two gms to kind of do things together so let us know how that works too if you like the flow of two gms or if you find it confusing i do actually really want to know that because it's good for potential future things like this we could do this in with future shows as well um, so if you have thoughts about that as well 
As a reminder, we would love feedback from more than just a survey, but also for the show. We're doing different things here. I want to hear how it works, how it lands, what didn't land, what you liked, what you didn't like. I want to hear it. And then, I guess, lastly would be, um, please make sure to like, share, rate, whatever you need to do with the program you have. We could really use that support and that help and that would be quite wonderful from all of you and i look forward to seeing you guys out there and hearing your guys' feedback i'm really excited as am i let's get into it this has been an atomic broadcasting production starfinder the packed worlds and the world setting are all copyright of paizo for more information visit paizo.com while you're there check out the starfinder playtest The PDF is free, and there's a survey to give you feedback. The music used is from Monument Studios Collection, as well as other assorted artists. If you enjoyed the show, feel free to check out our other productions on the Variety Hour feed, or our main show, The Written and the Lost, a weekly Pathfinder 2nd Edition show. All this and more can be found in the episode description. Don't forget to like, comment, and share with a friend. And most importantly, have an atomic time.